x-intercepts, there was three of them, and now we're going to go and get the y-intercepts. So we're just going to set x equal to 0. Now, without even doing that, there's already an, a y-intercept written down, which x-intercept is also a y-intercept. 0, 0. So if any of these points here on the graph have an x-coordinate of 0, they're a y-intercept as well. So one of them has 0, 0, which is both an x and a y-intercept. Uh, but we're going to see if there's any more. Maybe there's more than just that one. So set x equal to 0. We got 0 cubed minus 0 equals y. This is very easy algebra. So 0 is y. So our only y-intercept is 0 for x and 0 for y. So our only y-intercept is 0, 0. So that takes care of our intercepts. Now we're going to look for symmetry. Let's just use the intercepts to see what possible symmetry. It's these intercepts right here are hinting at one type of symmetry. If I graph them out real quick, actually they could if that was the entire graph, we'd have both symmetries, x and y axis. Um, but it looks like maybe if you flip across the y axis, you might get the same thing. I'd have to know all the points on the graph, not just three points. Uh, but it looks like we got a shot at y axis symmetry. So let's go ahead and run those tests. We'll do x axis first. We're going to replace, so we want to go across the x axis. So that means points would have a y negative y coordinate. That's what would change here. So we're going to replace y with negative y. And see if we get the same equation. So our equation is x cubed minus x equals y. And I'm going to replace y with negative y. So why is this not the same as the original equation? The, yeah, the left side's the same, but the right side's negative. So it's going to be a different equation. So we're going to fail x-axis symmetry. So we got no x-axis. Now I'll try y-axis. We're going to replace x with negative x. And again, we have to be careful. Anytime you do a substitution, it's a reasonable idea to use parentheses just to be safe. But every time you do a substitution, that's not just one number or one letter. If it's got a negative in front, or if I was substituting in like 1 plus x, you really want to overuse parentheses here. So the last time we had a negative x, we took it to even powers. It was being squared. And I realized after class, somebody asked me a question, why is, why is it that negative x squared is just regular x squared? So I wrote it down. I didn't actually explain why in class. So let's look really quickly at some algebra here. So before we had x squared, and the way to think about or negative x squared, and the way to think about squaring is, you know, the thing multiplied by itself. And so right here, uh, you should be able to tell that those two negative are going to cancel each other out when you multiply. Uh, if you want a little bit more detail, negative x really means x times negative 1. That's how you make something negative. And then, of course, the other negative x is exactly the same thing. Another negative 1 times x. And now we can reorder our multiplication. And now negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And we just got positive x squared. So this is the full details of why the negative disappears right here. So that was x squared. Now we'll look at what would happen if I cube this. Well, I could write it as negative x times negative x times negative x. Or I could get a little bit clever with my um, exponential notation. So I'm going to write it as just negative x times negative x squared. So I just broke out one of the negative x's. And we just saw above that negative x squared 